Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast. Episode 44, Top 5 Game Protagonists. With me, George, and as always joined by Tom, Arthur Morgan, to my Blinks the Time Sweeper. <laughs> that guy, I remember him. How's it going? I'm doing very well, mate. How are you? I'm doing all right. Excellent. Shall we, uh, the wave of new listeners <laughs> that have joined us off the back of the Gotham Gaming episode. Actually, yeah, it has been uh, really good this week. We've had a lot of new listeners chiming in and getting in touch. And new listeners. They're all yeah, here for yeah. their clap, so there's they one are. for the collected masses. Uh, we're really glad we, well, you all enjoyed last week's show because we had some very good comments about it. Uh, we, thanks we enjoyed to, it. Thanks again to Tom from Gotham Games for making the duo a trio uh, for a week. Um, I thought that worked quite well. It was like Clamon, Clamond. <laughs> There's it, one it, for it the was top almost one goes. <laughs> Clamond, Hoxton and May. <laughs> Clamond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. We'd be all right on Top Gear, wouldn't we? Yeah, Clamond, yeah. Hoxton and May. There you go. They're the new team. Lovely stuff. It's the new um, host of the Unofficial Controller podcast. Well, let's give them a quick run through. Yeah. We normally present them with some really high-caliber news from the gaming world. Tom, this week, as an example, what we got? Uh, we've got a bit of Animal Crossing news. Well, I guess that's bonus news, because it slipped by James the Work Experience, it boy. It did, but don't you worry. Okay. Then the feature is our top five game protagonist, and we reached out to the community through the medium yeah. of Instagram. And we've got some really good comments. Yes, we have. High caliber. Then we slip into what's known as your favorite section of the show, Listener Stingray, where we look through the listeners' weekly gaming pickups, retro, new, geeky, whatever. We, at this point, don't care. We've even had a Stingray Corvette in there, and we've even had... An actual stingray. An actual fish stingray, <laughs> we have. Yeah. Uh, then we go, the real deal, the big man turns up, the real stingray, and he pops his boot. We pick a retro VHS, and we talk about this week's weekly highlights for the new releases. Yeah. And then the show ends when I say to you what you're hoping to play. But the show begins. Ozcat. Grip that wheel. Imagine if he didn't drive. You know at school when you say the biggest idiot in the world is just about to speak, and you're like, yeah, but just one question. Like, <laughs> oh, great, yeah, you're that guy, are you? Right, so, um, Ozcat. Not Oddcat, because we're going back old school. Ozcat. Grip that wheel. Tom, what you been playing? This week, I've been uh, I picked up Dreams, downloaded that digitally uh, the last Friday after the podcast. Let me get me pillar. <coughs> yeah, you've heard probably heard enough about Dreams this week. <laughs> tell you? me everything. Let's pretend I've never heard about Dreams before. What are you going to tell me about it? You've brought notes, so you must be passionate. Not many notes, uh, just just to sort of guide me while talking about it. Um, it kicks off with a really very slick put together intro slash tutorial like gives you like the basics of the controls and very little big planet <coughs> which i haven't played so to me their games are very fresh and never played a media molecule game before have you not played tear away no nope. no nope. that was on the vita was it and it was on they've remade it for the ps4 as well ah. i thought you might have played that no no i haven't um you your cursor like your mouse cursor is a uh, thing little character called an imp um, and you can navigate that with the motion controls. Moving that around in like 3D space for the first few hours feels very complicated. Unless you you might find it quite natural, but for me, um, sort of art to me is drawing on a piece of paper, um, like two like 2D flat. You know what I mean? Like um, you uh, having the the whole 3D space to work in. Like you might put something somewhere and think that looks great and then you turn like 90 degrees and it looks bizarre it's like in the completely wrong position do you think with my off-air passion for legos i, I might think you would love it i'm very it. surprised you used to rave to me about this because it's so long in coming out it's taken them seven years to make when the ps4 came out it was talked about as like one of the big games that was coming from them it's taken this long. I thought you'd have been there day one. 
What is it that puts you off? I'll tell you the one thing holding me back from picking it up. Yeah. Lord Ponsilbury's up to your money. Oh, okay. But okay. to do so, All he's right. took mine down. <laughs> You'll have to get some more crumbs from the table. Won't I you? will have to. <laughs> well, if I eat the crumbs, then I can scrub from the food. Nippy egg and soldiers. Oh, well, <laughs> that's how we signify that the show is done. We better not go that go in too quick with that no um i always say no I'm, i need to stop that especially when talking about games that i've been playing in the week um <laughs> <laughs> anyway on with dreams so i've got reasonably way through the tutorial um they're really well done nicely narrated as well make it very simple to like learn different parts so i've done the sculpting um the animation the basic controls uh after that i went and played did the dream surfing so you can make your own stuff or you can go look at what everyone else is doing mm. the only thing i'd say about going dream surfing is it's almost a bit overwhelming you kind of look at what you've made which me i made like a little tree and i was like oh that's pretty rubbish really <laughs> compared to what's out there do you get a trophy for uploading a creation of course you do boom i predicted this you didn't did, i did. and do you, you get do. do you get a trophy for downloading a creation uh, i don't think well, you don't really download them i think you can favorite that I, I tend to thumbs up most of the stuff i look at because it's really impressive anyway bronze trophy you, for 10 I thumbs you up a little, uh, obviously you can make your own characters and people are making some fantastic stuff like there's actual characters that look legitimately just like they're uh, the actual official ones so Crash Bandicoot Sonic Mario some of them look a little ropey but uh, for the most part they look really good speaking of Sonic uh, today I saw Sonic Adventure Dreams Edition and I showed you this and I I could tell you were impressed no uh, let me tell you now I haven't seen anything come out of this yet that doesn't look like I mean when it's still it looks great but when it's in action it looks like a hokey cokey homemade game the character's limbs look gangly the way they interact with the surface on the Some ground of the movement is very iffy but like i played the you know metal gear solid one where he comes out of the uh the water with his snorkel on and stuff yeah. and um, he does a little bit of stealth through some crates mm -hmm. there's, a, there's basically a remake of that but it's done with ps1 graphics mm -hmm. as well and i thought wow this is incredible it's like just playing it again but you lean against a wall and all of a sudden he becomes Mr. Stretch and Stretch Armstrong, arms everywhere, head in the container. And yeah, to me, yeah. it all looks like Mr. Soft, you know, the old tree ball mince advert. I feel it'll, yeah, I know the one you mean. Mm -hmm. I feel, <laughs> I feel um, it'll come into its own when they release the multiplayer where you'll be able to have a lot of people working on a project together. Because as I explained, just making like a tree or a building or... Uh, a, a small scene is, is very complex you know what I challenge you to do yeah. I want you to build Farmerton in this oh, game oh that's a great idea as if you haven't done it already here's a plug for that Mario Maker level you made where you <laughs> stingray right Farmerton bunker all 40 levels down of the bunker the grapes as is now because the wagon and horses got destroyed in the crash plane crash yeah uh, do you think we should have like before we go into the actual main news, we should have Farmerton Village news and we talk about what's going on in the village. If any listeners fancy hearing that, let us know. Uh, if you want Farmerton news at the start, I think we should explain to new listeners that Farmerton's like the fictional village. Stop that we're it. Setting. It's not fictional, is it? Okay, it's factual. For the first, however, 20, 30 shows, you're like, no, don't break the fourth wall. And then every time you mention Farmerton, you say it's fictional. Hmm. Don't do this. You're a very naughty boy. Ponselbury, if you're not careful, he would eviscerate into thin air because he's not real. We can't have that. Because then okay. the show won't be funded. Wow. That's weird, isn't it? You never thought about that. You make the, you make the shots. It's as real as you want it to be. Okay. So we'll move on to the Farmerton Village news. Tell me more about Dreams. Are you done? In closing. In if closing. you go in closing. In fact, back in court again. let me remind you of a section you invented love leave all there maybe I'm when not I can't do that yet I'll do that next week okay it's way too big for that like I'm not even through the tutorials yet okay uh, but in closing if you're thinking of picking it up if you like 
Minecraft, Mario Maker, mm. um, Little Big Planet. You're gonna really enjoy this a mm. lot. It's ever growing community. Everyone seems pretty f like friendly. Like there's no negative comments and nonsense flying around. I ain't got on there yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wait. Gre number one griefer, I heard. I'm the best fist fighter the, in the game. Do you know what the best thing I enjoyed about it? You know what? the PlayStation music thing you can open where they've got like a recommended playlist for the week? Yeah. I just randomly put some of that on. I sat there just creating stuff and that was really fun. It was really chilled out. It's a great palate cleanser from like a fast-paced shooter like Call of Duty. Talking of music, some of the fans in the... Uh the Unglorious Bar Stewards Forum that's been created have created a uh, Spotify playlist called yeah. the Official Unofficial Controller Podcast Album. The, the Official Unofficial Controller Podcast Album. Ah, you see. I, I, I plugged it wrong. I listened to it today. It's got Wonderwall on it, like all those classic 90s albums. <laughs> Compilation albums. I need to get myself Spotify to listen to that. You don't have Spotify? No. How do you listen to the show? Uh, just the podcast app. You have someone... Well, I just have someone listen to it for me. You have someone write it down and then re Mumsy reads the transcript to you at night time. <laughs> what else have you been playing? That's and it, really, other than the usual, which will not. there's no point in talking about. Uh, but no, it's been nice to actually play a new game, uh, playing Dreams. It's, like I say, it's an acquired taste. Mm. But uh, I think for the price point as well, it's really worth it. Okay. If you like creating, you like art, you like mu making music, you can make music on it as you well. You know I want a physical copy of it as well, don't you? I know, I really wish I had that, but... Oh, gosh. Well, I could have done, but I went and bought a voucher, didn't I? Never mind. Couldn't wait. Better ask, what have you been playing this week? Ah, well, Pinny Lugos back, it's 2008. I've been playing Resistance Fall of Man, which is a... Uh, I think it's a Sony... Ex I know it's a Sony exclusive shooter, uh, by Insomniac the makers Ooh. of uh, Ratchet and Clank that they've yeah. done this sort of you'd like it actually because it takes place in the UK you're an American soldier uh, fortunately or unfortunately but it's based in the UK and you start off in York uh, oh so it's not just the only city in the UK in a video game is London no 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 Ooh. and again they've got some really great voice actors but the character that you play as I say unfortunately is American not because I've, I pour shame on our cousins but because it was set in the UK, they've got some good voice acting, and it would have been quite cool to be one of those UK resistance fighters. But mm. that's me. I'm sure this old gangbuster numbers in America, and they probably wanted to be um, American in the game, so yeah. it won out, and that's fair enough. You, you're this guy. You kind of in the first missions, it's it's got vibes of Call of Duty two and three about it. If you remember from the 360 PS3 era, yes, what we loved all the smoke and all that. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, kick their asses back to the <laughs> fatherland that trailer we watched about six million times yeah um there's all that going on but it's actually taking place through an alien invasion and you land in york and you liberate york and well, you, you're trying to liberate york but then you get infected by the chimera which then sort of half mutates you it gives you these powers that which explain away okay. first person shooting mechanics yeah. and other bits and makes you super tough and all that sort of nonsense and uh the next the second level set in Grimsby in Lincolnshire <laughs> what seriously coastal in a, battle in a fish canning factory with a load factory. of codads no the fish canning factory has been turned into the <laughs> Chimera uh, Chimera um, like breeding place so this yeah. is where they expedite the transformation into a Chimera and you go through there and you you don't really do a lot really you kind of break free because you've been captured and you get out and you fight your way through and like I say this uh, you're you're kind of helping the UK resistance at this point, and then the next level set in Nottingham. Even uh, better. And there you go. And they're like, why is that better than Lincolnshire? Nottingham's better than Grimsby, regardless. No, mate. No. Surely not. Terrible football team, but well, we keep going, and then I think the climax. The I think you, we're working towards a climax in London somewhere, basically. Okay. Yes. I do remember looking at that being a, a bit envious when uh, it came out. And um it's yeah, not it, it, graphically it's not aged well. Was it not? Cuz it was quite the powerhouse, wasn't it? When and it I came think 
well when it was at launch it probably yeah. was yeah, but yeah. looking back through some of the other games in the PS3 back catalogue like Bioshock it doesn't look very good um, quick uh, quick question about obviously Insomniac Games did Ratchet and Clank mm. they're rumoured to be working on a, a PS5 launch title which could be a new Ratchet and Clank that would be good do you think obviously because they are a fan of a launch game the Ratchet and Clank is. Um, I've w- I've watched. Um, I've seen you play that, and it looks real good. That's the one. I don't think they had much to do with that one that came out. And oh, start. okay. No, right. But the ones that I think they did the ones on the PS3, and they they're yeah. really good. Uh huh. Um. Anyway, I digress. There you yeah. go. I have been playing it a little bit because there's no dread because the graphics have aged. I am sort of charging through and. Uh, <laughs> rifle butt in the bad guys and then moving yeah. on to the next one one shot rifle butt one shot rifle but I've been sort of steamrolling through it I don't I don't get the feeling they want to play you to play that way I've been doing the classic unofficial controller Benny Hill in it at times <laughs> and there's uh, I played this certain level there's a level in Manchester as well where you fight through into the cathedral and I just cakewalk through it and I was, yeah. I was researching it a bit for the show and for my own personal interest you know me I like to deep dive these things and the, that level is one that's like renowned for being like full of um, atmosphere and dread <laughs> and I just sort of like pistol whip <laughs> boop, 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 boop. straight through straight boom. through just cleaned up um, guilty of playing a bit more Yakuza 5 um, although uh-huh. I put resistance on because I wanted a break um, You're a bit yakuza out. I am a bit yakuza out. You yakuza I'm yakuza So we'll leave that there. A little bit more Nino Cooney. That game is so beautiful. It does look good. It's beautiful. And it it's so unoffensive to play as well. Yeah. The uh, And y- you can just sit there and sort of grind away. And I've got to the point now where I can catch the little enemies that I fight. So it's, it yeah. literally has become that Pokemon clone that people mm-hmm. call it. Uh, and, and that's quite interesting you beat some into submission and they kind of like fall in love with you bizarrely right and then you've got a woman has joined my team and uh, she will play a harp and then you can like, train them to be your um, I forget what they're called now I was going to call them personas but that's a totally different game but your little <laughs> friends that they're called they, they yeah. come with you um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to mixing it up on there and getting some new there's, there's some cool ones I've seen through the game to this point and I was thinking I wish he was like my little friend um, um, what do you think is going to be the next big game you get like new game mm. over the coming months because it's obviously going to pick up in March well, what, what do you know. reckon you're going to get you put me on the spot now aren't you Last of Us 2 maybe the first one it's a bit of a way off in May but it's probably the biggest maybe yeah or I Final, mean, Final Fantasy 7 yeah I'd probably get that mm. I think I might want to get that physical I don't know why oh yeah bit yeah, of a hoarder same. aren't they I think it's double disc apparently a uh, bit of news for quick news though is it's going to be 100 gigabyte apparently as well wow double yeah. disc 100 gigabytes yeah. Oof, that's chunky isn't it yeah and that's just like part one isn't it because they're breaking it down into parts. How are they going to get the second part out before the PS4s? Yeah, I was kind of dead. thinking. It, well, it's, it'll probably be cross gen, but of course it yeah. will. Is I it don't know about it. I've, I've actually, um, I was really looking forward to it, and then I'm looking at some of the footage I've seen. I'm like, is it going to feel really dated in its storytelling? Because people ramble on about it's one of the best stories ever in gaming. One of the best games. I do wonder whether it's just going to feel a little bit old, even with a fresh sort of remake. I think with the remake that they're doing, it's a little bit Resident Evil 2 in the way they've gone about it. So I don't think you need to worry too much Mm -hmm. from what I've seen. Yeah. Um, And the gameplay's been mixed up, so it's like your one... Was it 15? Yeah. Yeah. So... uh, I think it'd be fresh enough and I think if they just flip a couple of things on the head I mean mm. they're playing it very careful when you get dressed up as Cloud you cross dress for a section or two yeah that you? was a bit like three minutes like what's going on here it's like is it a sort of 
I wouldn't say comedy, but like, is there just bizarre Japanese stuff in it? Like, that? I think at the time it was bizarre Japanese, but now in the world that we live in, they're they're playing a bit of a different line with it, which right, is interesting okay. enough. Yeah, we'll yeah. see how that plays yeah. out, and uh, I'm sure that will uh, be a many Kotaku. Uh, I think probably from my perspective of never playing it before, having it in parts isn't going to be such a bad thing because if it gets to like a cliffhanger. I'll be really hyped and I'll I'll be really looking forward to the next one whereas I think other people will be like well I know what happens so great I that's like why that. I think they've got to mix it up a little bit and for as many people uh, okay. that have played it I think there's as many people that haven't yeah to me in my head I have it like you're either an Ocarina of Time or a Final Fantasy 7 I mm. think the Playstation and N64 were in quite a big battle then because you had Metal Gear Solid Super Mario Golden Eye Final Fantasy 7 the big the big sort of um, titles on each console and I think you were one or the other to a certain point interesting mm. have we grounded out the what you've been playing section I think we have we better move we've on we've stomped that mud hole dry we have any Farmerton news Lionel the lawyer been up to anything Barry the cowboy builder what's he been doing Tony Ditley, the man from Italy, the landlord of the grapes. See Baz him? has been knocking up an extension, but because of the is Baz the, the, is Baz the name you refer to as Barry the Cowboy Builder? Yeah. Okay. Bazza. Bazza. On first name terms with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's plumbed in a toilet, but because it's flooded, it's knackered. Who was the all, um, all his fresh tiles have floated off down the? I'll tell uh, you one man who what's, what's the river in Farmerton called? Hmm. <laughs> You know, it should be on the tip of my tongue because we live here. I think it's called the Sloughs. Sloughs. <laughs> the River Sloughs. <laughs> the River Sloughs. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I think that's Adam, the place. artist, is drawing that right now <laughs> on the map. The River Sloughs. Spell I mean, it I'm how you want. It dreams creation. Yes, it's got you to have must. water effects. Oh, you must have, yeah. yeah. I was about to say, the man who yes. booked the trend, Brian the Mechanic. He died, didn't he, in the plane crash? He died, but... In the law of Farmerton, his name should be Mike or Mark. Hmm. Mike the mechanic. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I see where you're going <laughs> with that. Yeah, with our very uh, I want preschool name. Did you see the uh, Farmerton news? PCSO Ross Kemp got an award for his bravery <laughs> on I Christmas did see Eve. That, yeah, that was awesome. Wonderful. I wish we could do more with the law and just make it a bit more. I don't know. What do you well, want from it? I'd, everything. <laughs> just everything. <laughs> but I should think a lot of people are listening to this going, what is this nonsense? Well, this nonsense, we're going to move on to some actual video game news. Yes, the news. We've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, Tom. Get that bulb changed. Uh, Dying Light is celebrating oh, its fifth anniversary. I like what you've done there. By introducing a number of new content updates and promotions. The open world zombie RPG has steadily rolled out regular updates for half a decade since its launch in January 2015, quietly making it one of the best supported games of this generation. The uh, latest content package includes a story mode difficulty to help players both new and returning breeze through the campaign ahead of launch at, of Dying Light 2. The developer also says it has a month of in-game events planned between today and and March the 19th, which will include Dying Light's first ever free-to-play weekend on Steam. Uh, starting tomorrow, fan favourite events will make comebacks in addition to a few surprises, say, say Techland. A new paid DLC pack is now available for all platforms too. The fifth anniversary bundle includes two melee weapons and a new shotgun. The pipe does 50 plus damage after three or more hits, while the shotgun is also souped up with 50% faster reloading as well as increased damage size and bullet spread stemming from being able to unload both barrels at one for massive effect. Barry the Cowboy Builder got both barrels with that extension. I bet he did. The DLC will cost you 2 99 or a local equivalent on your platform of choice. Mm. Very good. Very good. Well, next up, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a documentary about a game. <laughs> I think that rhymes. I, James has excelled himself today on the script. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater released in the late 90s and became an instant smash hit and cultural icon, spawning many sequels and spin-offs. Of course, these days, it's a bit of a different story, but not 20 years ago. Tony Hawk was just as much a video game legend as a skateboarding one. 
The story of how the first title was made will be told in a brand new documentary named Pretending I'm Superman. The documentary will debut at Mammoth Film Festival at the end of February. It sounds as though it will chart the story of how Hawk came to be involved with Activision's product project. The history of skateboarding games and how the game transformed the sport. Memories of Tony Hawk. I tell you what, if you've got memories of Tony Hawk, you ought to go check out Oid Harvey Retro's uh, id little video review of Tony Hawk. It was really good. Yeah. His content is supreme. He also gave us a little shout out on his Bioshock playthrough. Mm -hmm. He quoted me, the man who finishes games, as saying Bioshock 2 was the better game of the Bioshock trilogy. I would argue infinite, but that's just me. Yeah, but you just like shinier, newer things. Of course. The actual the game part. mechanics of the game, 2 was the better game. Oh, I, I downloaded all three and I started one and it feels very... When you swing that wrench, it's just like... It feels very condemned from the yeah. Xbox 360 Yeah, launch. it does. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Still a very impressive visually looking Do you game, like game documentaries, Tom? Um, I watched the God of War one um, they put out on YouTube, which was really good. How to I be a father. No, I don't, I don't... I can't remember what it was called. It was just following the team and how That was me it. being edgy. Okay. You like that. Father Simulator. Mm. Father of War. Um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I watch stuff like that, yeah. Definitely. If it's something that really interests me. Mm. I, w I remember watching the little shorts they put out on YouTube as well from Nintendo about Breath of the Wild. They were quite interesting. It's always interesting to see how it's made, but also it can take away some of the, Takes the, the magic. magic. Away. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You don't want to know. You don't want to see how the strings hold yeah. up the scenery, do you? <laughs> Next, oh, shall I take this? Shall I lead in yeah, with this last bit Yeah, you better take this one, aren't you? I tell you what, all our Xbox listeners, all of a sudden they can get on the train, can't they? Because guess what? It wouldn't be the news without a little bit of Kiryu. Xbox Games Pass is adding eight more games on Xbox One and PC, including some beloved titles like Yakuza Zero and Kingdom Hearts 3. In fact, you can now play through the entire Kingdom Hearts series on Xbox One, 1 1.5 and 2.5 HD Remix and HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue are available on the Microsoft Store, which composed the full saga Kingdom Hearts 3 on Game Pass. So That's you can play Yakuza 0 on the Xbox? You can now. Wow. Do you think we'll see the whole series on there now? I though? think you will. I think the exclusivity of my favourite game series... Run its course. Has run its course. Well, it's time for a little bit of bonus news. I always do it differently just to annoy you. Bonus news. New listener. <laughs> it's not even hard. <laughs> it is for me. That's like Lord Ponsilbury. That's something I overheard a conversation that Munzee was saying about Lord Ponsilbury on the phone to Mavis from the village earlier. Another new character. Mm. Getting the law book out. Getting it in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit controversial. <laughs> Don't know what she was talking about. No need to worry. No need for anyone to worry. Well, a bit of bonus news. Mm. Uh, Nintendo put out an Animal Crossing Direct this week. Ooh. It's going to be their first big title of um, this. Of is this bonus year. news, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it was a 25-minute long um, Direct. If you're really interested in Animal Crossing, I'd probably say go check out the whole Direct so you can get all the information on it. Um, a lot was discussed about cloud saves and stuff because it can be a big thing spending hours and hours on that I, I think they're like an island this time round. Okay. So there's been a big hoo-ha of like, are there going to be cloud saves and not? But I think they are coming in the future and you're going to be able to transfer save files and you are going to be able to have um, eight different islands per Switch console. So in, in theory, if you want to layman's terms, eight different save files. Has it got a shipwreck vibe? Is that what it is? I don't think so this time. It's like an it's called like Island Getaway. Um, uh, right. And that comes from that little, little raccoon. I guy. have to confess, there's not a lot of interest in me for that. I think I've got it or had it on the GameCube. I had the I've one got on it or 3DS had it on the Wii. Because obviously, the one came out on the 3DS and everyone was raving about it. And I was like, oh, Animal Crossing, it's a Nintendo first party. I probably should check it out and see what it's all about. But it's a bit like um, Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley, that sort of vibe. Mm, it's more like The Sims. 
No, no, it's not. It, it when you're playing it. No, it's no. They're definitely more like Harvest Moon. Okay. Not so much the farming aspect, but just the general feel of it. I, that's what I compare it to. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't. It comes out the same day as Doom Eternal, and I do like to try and get the first party Nintendo games, but shelling out like eighty to a hundred pound for both is. I, I know which I'd choose. Which would be Doom. Oh, a little bit of interesting news. James' work experience uh, birthday this week. Is it? Yeah. Any uh, mumsy treated yeah. him to uh, Pokemon Shield. Shield. That's the one I'd have gone for. That's what he thought. Yeah. Because yeah. everyone else has got sword. You see. Oh. Well, if you think about it, it's the one you go with: Pokemon Sword and Shield. Here, sword. Boom. Beep, beep, beep. So has this hey, caused you're out it the door. to be a little less than a Fortnite machine, or he seems to be absorbed into it? That's good. Yeah, I've been watching. It, I thought this looks good. Well, as Tom from Gotham Games explained last week, mm. Pokemon never went away. No, it's did you? Been there. You being the rabid Switch owner, Nintendo first party uh, yeah. slathering dog that you are, mm -hmm. you got that game? I haven't. No, it never. It just didn't feel like a fit. I remember watching... It's everything you want it to be. It, I don't know if it is. It's everything you want it to be. I remember sitting down, like, hyped for the trailer, thinking we're going to get, like, Breath of the wild size world with, like... Just well, that's not Pokemon, not. though, is it? I know it's not, but they move at a snail's pace, like, the, of how they change stuff. It's a good game. Oh, yeah, I don't deny it. It's probably a very good game. It's a very good game. Um, and yeah I'd probably pick it up to add to the collection at some point but yeah I, I don't know obviously we had the Animal Crossing Direct this week there's very very strong rumours that's freed up now to allow a full Nintendo Direct next week focusing on everything else they're going to have coming out for the first six months of the year which is how they've usually done it usually it's done before now but they have been known to leave it a little bit later I don't think they're just going to not have one before E3. Because they've got no roadmap, really, of what's coming out. And people want to know. You've got a nice, shiny new Switch for Christmas. You're like, oh, what's coming out? Mm. I don't want to see loads of Wii U remasters, but I'm sure we'll see a few. Um, got a doff my cap. That Fire Emblem's got me very... Is it Fire Emblem? Three. Astral Chain. It's Astral got me Chain. very interested. I showed you a bit of that, didn't I? That you? does... Yeah. Now... I think that potentially could come to PS4 anyway. And Xbox? And Xbox, yeah, more than likely. That would be uh, interesting. It's, it's a Platinum Games. Uh, Platinum Games are rumoured to be making an announcement next week as well, which could tie in with the Direct and be a sort of Bayonetta 3 thing, but who knows. They've basically got four big reveals, haven't they? They've done this like... Astral Chain multi-format. Could that possibly, be one of them? Possibly, yeah, it could be. Yeah, definitely. Well, enough of that hokey-cokey Animal Crossing news, Tom. Question is, this is the question everyone's waiting to know off the back of the news. Did we miss anything? Did we miss the stealth drop of the Dreamcast 3000? Everyone's <laughs> playing it tonight, playing Shenmue 4 to Chapter 5, telling us how amazing it is. Uh, if we did miss the stealth drop of the Dreamcast, I forgot what I called it, 3000, how are they going to get in touch with us and let us know that we're idiots? Well... Hopefully you won't let us know we're idiots, but I'm sure some of you will. <laughs> uh, you can reach us in mostly Instagram direct message is where we get most of our feedback. Um, you can also do the same on Twitter with a direct message, but you can also email us at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Hmm. Okay. So please do. Well, as we've said many times, Lord Ponsilbury remortgaged the big house in the village for that bigger boy's email address. We want some feedback on there. We do. Lots more than we get. I want to see... I want to go to the bunker door and Pete the postman... Mm, no, he's Pete the plumber. Your real dad. Paul the postman. Great big sack full of mail. Because that's yeah. how emails get delivered to the village. I thought the postman around there was called Pat. Straight don't... Mm, suddenly now you owe the BBC four grand. <laughs> Why do you have to do this? Well... That was my wages for the month gone. Lawyer I'm not getting dreams now, am I? A part-time lawyer like myself could 
easily handle that. Based on retro versus modern, you'd end up making me give the BBC <laughs> 10 grand. <laughs> 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 Feeling like a job was well done. Yeah, if you want to hear a courtroom battle between me and George with uh, a retro versus modern court case, then go take a listen. It's uh, been a very popular episode, hasn't it, mate? They love that one, don't yeah. they? So, uh, yeah, go check it out. And a little cast, bit more. Cast your judgment on there. The comments are still open. Maybe for a comeback for modern gaming. Well, you know. Who knows? If you keep plying Mumsy with that cheap liquor that you keep getting, <laughs> that uh, slow gin that you get from uh, Slow Gin Jean. Slow Gin Jean? <laughs> slow Gin Jean. Gin Jeanie? She ain't got a license to sell uh, liquor, but she still sells that stuff anyway. And I tell you what, I don't know if it's made with screen wash or <laughs> meths. Strong stuff. Oof. I went blind for two days off the back of that. Was that you, you weren't drinking that on the Christmas special, were you there? Well, I think that's what... Uh, it's probably what was in there. What was the landlord of the wagon called before he John. met his... John. John. <laughs> John. The wagon. A, John. a 15th century coaching in, flattened by a Russian jet engine from a hokey-cokey airline. And then up pops Tony Ditley, the man from Italy... He uses a little bit of the old brick, turns it into a nice lardy dar, like all the villagers are getting now. They're getting these lardy dar wine bars. Yeah. Have you been in the grape since he's opened it for a one of those? You get like a a slate, a grey slate with loads of parma ham on it. And you get like a glass of wine and there's some olives and that was the. I'm stuff. a man of culture. I've been down there for a glass of red with, with with retro gamer Thomas. How does he drink through his face mask? Is it a straw? It a straw yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. Is it he a has bit it out of a pint glass in a straw. Is it a bit Classic. awkward that PCSO Ross Kemp has just stood silent, arms folded behind him? He's just, he's like a personal bodyguard. Do you ever speak to him? No. His name's mud with me after he stitched me up. He got offered a million quid to go to ITV. Right. And I asked the same for like the panto work and he said no way. Even with you all in drag, dressed up, giving it the full twanky. Yeah, not it interested. Nothing. Nope. Can't imagine why. Yeah. You do the. You do. They do know. They do know that you do the sound over, aka the voiceover, <laughs> for Iceland, don't they? I don't know. Yeah, if they do. We're rambling anyway. We better move on. Well, before we move on, we'll just do a call to arms, please. Um. Any new listeners? No, wait. Up? No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You had another new character, didn't you? That was never woken. ever coming out. No, look, it was on the cutting room floor, but That's you did where it belongs. No, the fans are like, oh, what's this? Another new character? Who could it be? <laughs> God, now, Tom, the hater of the law, championed a new character. Now we had a mate. Tom, Tom had a guy. He had a guy in the village, the leader of the Unglorious Bar Stewards, called Major Tom. Now, he, he took a nosedive in the Christmas special, defending the fam the, the the peoples of Farmerton, didn't he? he? He died in glory. In glorious honour. but And bravery. Stripped to the waist like PCSO Ross Kemp. It wasn't necessary, but he did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> you decided that Major Tom survived. As some sort of strange cyborg creature. <laughs> now, I don't know whether I'd left to kick the creosote in over, Tom, or whether this actually happened, but you decided it was going to be called Major Com for communications, and you were going to yeah. come in, or he was going to come in, <laughs> with a robot voice. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and do a call to arms. Definitely not happening. It's not happening. Maybe next week. Okay. Maybe if we get you some of that expensive Suntory Fun, Japanese yeah, whiskey. Definitely. Then get you half happen. a bottle in you. Major Com will make a, a full appearance. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not getting wheeled out, who's getting wheeled out? Because no one. I'll, I'll just do the call to arms. You're just going to do it yourself? Yeah. I'm just sending a shout out. To I you. had a character, didn't I, called Fagin Ray. You do a shout out then as Fagin, not shout out. Call to arms as Fagin Ray. Well, we need to get him though, don't we? So I'll just go over here. In you come, Fagin. 
Now, you've got to be careful he, with Fagan Ray. The law with Fagan Ray is that he is like a stingray from the 19th century. No, no, it's, it's deeper than that now. Is it? Yeah, get your Charles Dickens book out. It's a bit deeper than that. Fagan Ray. Fagan Ray is a second cousin of Stingray. <laughs> but he's so illicit, Stingray don't want anything to do with him. Because if you leave something sloafing on a desk, he'll have it away. Okay. Fagan Ray will nick out. He's a bit of a he's a bit Deep, of a scoundrel. Sticky fingers. Now hopefully he don't come in here and steal listeners for another hokey cokey podcast. I'll get him in. Come on, Fagan. Hello, George. You all right? I'm all right, Fagan. Yes. Now, Fagan, meet Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello, Fagan Ray. Can I have your hat? <laughs> you can. Brew it. I'll bring it back. Please, I will. Form. Now, I want you. Listeners, right, and what I want you to do, I want you to follow the unofficial controller podcast. Now, now what, what do we want them to do, boys? Well, Fagan, what what do we want them to do, Tom? What are we going to ask Fagan to ask? I want them to target the new listeners. So I want the new listeners to new share... New listeners, sir, yes. Share the profile, the Instagram page. Just please, please, please help us reach more people via Instagram. Have you got that, Fagan, Ray? I think so, yeah. Okay. Why is he always followed around by a group of small boys? Oof. No, don't bring that up. Okay. Don't bring that up. Okay. That's the one thing no one mentions about Fagan, Ray. Okay. Because you, you think you might be doing the thievery. It's a little bit darker than that. Oh, dear. Don't bring up the boys. Don't mention the boys, sir. No. PCSA Ross Kemp don't like me looking at the boys. <laughs> don't bring that up. Never since Gollum's dual battle with himself have I seen such a great display of acting as I just saw then. Well, you being the best method actor in the business, that's a, that's a high compliment for Fagan Ray. No problem. And through, we didn't, he didn't even have to do it because like a, a shout out on local radio, can I have a shout out from a cousin? You just did it. <laughs> <laughs> Off. Love it. Through the medium of Fagan Ray, you did the shout out. So you want them to do whatever they can to further the show. Go pod chase, leave a review, like everyone's reviews that's on there. If you haven't left a review on iTunes, go on and leave a review. I still, my side's still split at Mr. Mystery's review. I think that's still the best review on there. If that's still the best review on there by June, Mr. Mystery might get one of George's special boxes. So there is a reason to send yourself to iTunes. Do a like, a review, five stars, don't do anything less. Be brutal <laughs> in the comments, but leave us yeah. five stars, <laughs> yeah. please. Uh, I think that's probably a good bag, don't you? Very good bag. Now we found ourselves. <coughs> Fagan. <laughs> Fagan raced up me pen. Has he? Uh, what I used to mark off the script as we go. Anyway, I'll have to do it with pencil. I thought that was the highlighter you used to highlight bits of the script where you're going to edit in some very flashy audio. Well, since your pay rise, the listeners will notice. Oh, no. There's been no audio. sound effects, has no. there? No. Um, Never mind, we are. well spent. The top five gaming protagonists feature. So it's that time for us to cast our eye over the leading men and women in video games to take our time to talk about the heroes and heroines of the game genre. Who captured our hearts? Who did we go on voyages of discovery with, not only in game but as people? Most of the time we stare at these people's backs, yet still we hold them dear and form lifelong bonds with the ones that tug at our hearts, either through nostalgia or a great script and setup. As always, we reached out to our listeners and they came back with, as always, great responses which we have incorporated into the feature. What's wrong, Tom? Fagan Ray stolen your microphone? He has. He's stolen the nut which holds the microphone level. That's better. I told you to take out, didn't I? You did. Um, well, I want to swap the first one because that would be my last one. If I had to choose a number one, that would be it, so I'll save that for the end. And I'll swap it for one of my other ones. Your best ever work you want to... You want to finish off with, do you? If you consider that my best ever work, I better get out of here. But thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll kick off. Uh, one of my picks was Dante from Devil May Cry series. Well, I tell you what. Why don't we do it in order then, and then we don't get confused? Because Fagin Ray stole my highlighter. Finster Gamer, first listener to get in touch. Okay. He says, okay. <laughs> he says, 
Good old Finster Gamer. One of the loyal and glorious. Uh, and if you dedicate yourself to the show, you can be incorporated into the Inglorious Bastards as well. There's a little VIP area for them nowadays, isn't there? there? Is. If you want to make yourself known to us, maybe go on a post and say, I'm an Unglorious. Maybe get yourself some artwork. You've got to prove it. Yeah, you've got to get prove on it. ITunes, get five on stars. iTunes. Five stars. Give it the full ramel. You'll get a picture by Adam the Artist. You'll get inclusion in a VIP area for the very VIP of all the VIPs. You get to choose Don't. a track to go on the... That's how you get to add a track. Yes. You have to get in the VIP area. And then you can get in there and you can add music to the official, unofficial, unofficial controller podcast theme sound. Tom, what is it? Fagan Ray stolen my lips. It's the official, unofficial controller podcast <laughs> playlist. <laughs> of course it is. Anyway, Finster game, one of the loyal and glorious bar stewards. Private Finster. It's a tough choice, but here are my top three in no particular order. One, Chris Redfield, favourite character from one of my favourite game series, plus he punched that boulder that time. <laughs> <laughs> Two, Ezio Auditor. Auditor oh. Sorry, Finster game. I've got into the habit. Ezio. Auditor. Oh, well, look at... Oh, dear. Now I'm starting to wonder if Tony Ditley, the man from Italy, is your real father, because he's got a bouffant as well. <laughs> it was great to see him grow into the suave, worldly legend that he became. Three. Uh, bit of an easy pick, this one. Arthur Morgan, the deepest, most tragic character of recent times. Go away. I can't remember the last time I was so emotionally invested in a character as Arthur. You want to put that first page to one side? Uh, he also goes on here. Oh, no. Next. Boba Loba. He's a loyal member of the Unglorious as well. Bottom of the sheet, says Boba Loba. James' work oh, experience see. got I carried see. away on his birthday. He had too much panda pop. He did. And he, What's uh, Boba Loba got to say? He says, Marcus Phoenix Gears is my favourite gaming franchise. And Marcus Phoenix was such a cool, badass character. I was immediately hooked. Voiced by Jean DiMaggio, Future Armor, Bender 2. That's a voice you can't unhear one you, once you learn that having said that it was a dom storyline that really grabbed me especially in gears 3 can we have a best supporting protagonist character hmm maybe, maybe for the future do you know what this show keeps going with that desperate for content then we'll be doing the best supporting 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 character in a video game <laughs> he goes on to say master chief is a no brainer too relentless heroic mysterious and generally awesome such an iconic character recognisable to basically anyone that plays video game True words from both Finster and the mighty Boba Loba there. Sad times in the Boba Loba household. We must just take a moment because one of their beloved pets passed away this week. Yeah, sorry to hear that, Boba Loba. Yes. Thoughts are with you. Looks like Tom. New listener. Now, this young lady sounds like sort of class and elegance, Daisy Newton. I love Sora from Kingdom Hearts, she says. He looks awesome for a PS2 game. He's cool with the Keyblade. I love playing Kingdom Hearts. I've completed one, and me and my dad are on to two. Green heart emoji. Yeah, he's very stylish, isn't he, Sora? Sora, very cool yeah. character. Keyblade, nice to see a reference to the Kingdom Hearts in there. We love a bit of... Well, I love a bit of Kingdom Hearts. I don't know about you, but... I do. But considering I've only played the one on the 3DS, I really should get the whole collection play it through he should actually because yeah. that's a it's right on my street good value yeah much like your they're, Iceland they're, they're doing a do you do Iceland or do you do farm foods both I do <laughs> farmerton foods <laughs> this is a law heavy show new listeners going to be like what, what? I've come off from yeah. games which felt like a real professional interview and now I'm sat in this yeah. Archers meets Emmerdale we have odd episodes like this don't we where we, we get a bit law carried away every once in a while the law takes we the do. stage so we're going to come over to one of my picks for gaming protagonist mm -hmm. and it's Dante from the Devil May Cry series well, what's he all about Dante dived onto our screens with the very first Devil May Cry all those years ago in 2001 immediately showed that the new Millennium's action hero was going to be badass, overconfident and stylish. The Demon Hunter ooze smoking sick style from his trademark red, red leather jacket to his silver white hair. This was character design done right. Uh, and his selection of weapons only cemented him as a future legendary protagonist. Dual pistols, ebony and ivory and trusted sword rebellion have seen him slay through enemies for the past 19 years. 
I mean, last year's Devil May Cry 5 looks like he isn't slowing down anytime soon. A little fact, one of the game designers, Hideki Kayama, who worked on Devil May Cry, said Dante took influence from a character, the character Cobra of acclaimed manga and anime series, Space Adventure Cobra. Whew, Tom. Yeah. You had my fact book it this week, didn't I you? I did, yeah. That's, uh, <coughs> do you know what I'm going to... Do you know what I might do? I've not seen that anime, but... Um, I haven't wheeled the PS2 out in a little while. I might... Uh, you should play five. Don't so be good. Oh, you should watch Godfather 3. <laughs> like, I want to pl- I want to watch one or two first. Uh, I thought you'd finished one. I kept starting I haven't played it. two. I've played... No, so I've done one and two, not played three, played four and five. So apparently I've left the best one out. What's wrong with it? According to some... Okay, well, moving on, we got another uh, loyal fan of the show, and uh, oil, all oil, all loyal fans get incorporated into the law of the show themselves, so you want to get incorporated in the law, get involved in the conversation. This is Retro Gamer Thomas. Now, this man is better known as the cannibal stroke console serial killer of gaming hardware. If you have him round for a gaming session, don't be surprised if he starts nibbling on his 3DO. He says, Nathan Drake is... This is a good pick, this is. For a story game, this is a good game. Nathan Drake is my favourite. Really fell in love with the Uncharted series and as a special treat, Don's got me... That's Donna, the more Donna, I know you're listening. You just poured him a craft ale. You're giving him a back massage. I hope you're well. hope the new job's working out. Don has got me this special collected edition of Thief's End. Lucky monkey. As a kid, it was, uh, as a kid it was, and to some extent still is Sonic. Had the first game on my, on my Mega Drive, and the speed of him amazed me. Plus, when you left him, still he tapped his foot <laughs> and gave me the same look Donna does when I'm late back from the pub. <laughs> you naughty scoundrel. Blame PCSO Ross Kemp for not wheeling you back quick enough. The fantastic nostalgic memories the podcast brings to me. Awesome. No problem. We love you, Retro Gamer Thomas. We do. To be honest, if if you ever come up Farmerton Way, I'll let you gorge on a, a small tub of Mega Drive pads. How's that sound? I think he'll be very uh, keen to do that. Well, this guy's gone in deep, hasn't he? He's, he started out as a new listener, and he's just thrown himself into the uh, unglorious bar. He's, he's in the VIP, VIP area. area. Uh, Mr. Pumpkin666, my favourite gaming protagonist has got to be myself. In any game where I can create myself and NPCs say my name, that's a win for me because it feels like I saved the world or I stopped the bad guy. He's a man after your heart, Tom, isn't he? He is. Me, me. Ego mania. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, look out. Parky Jaw for one moment. Thank you, Mr. Pumpkin, for uh, commenting in this week. It's the new listener, Sock. The Sock Warrior. Welcome to the Keep community. Sock Warrior. Commander Shepard. Mass Effect Revan. Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, great choices from Bioware's uh, very good RPGs there. Commander Shepard. Now, I find it wrong if anyone creates him than anything other than, than default. Than, than default. Mm, my place default. Like, I've watched clips on YouTube I'm like, who's that? That's not Commander Shepard. Who is this guy? Who is that guy or girl? Um, yeah, oh, yeah I forgot he could play character. through as a... Yeah, yeah. I should have played through as a... Mm, I'm already through as default Shepard, though. <laughs> you Do you know what annoys... When you've done real Shepard, you can't go back. Okay, well, that's, that's true. He is awesome. He's a bit Boy Scout, isn't he? He's very much like... He's a bit of a Superman. I think if, if life was a video game, I think... I'm just the default character because I ain't got the patience. Okay. For the goal of creating and stuff. And I've put, yeah, <laughs> and then I've added points like 500 on speech, craft, and charm, and then the rest of it I've just left at zero. It'd be fine. Uh, yes. Um, now, apologies if you're not a new listener, but we think you might be. Uh, new listener, Rai underscore S dot T dot A dot R dot S. Stars. You probably better know him as Rye Stars. He says, uh, well, why don't you do this one, Tom? You're the voice uh, of Farmerton Foods. Why don't you read something Yeah, out? I can do this in the, nec- the next one of my picks as well. Okay, jumping in. I honestly couldn't pick one. I'd say Solid Snake, Big Boss from Metal Gear Solid. 
it was probably the first hero character I remember from gaming uh, as a kid. Plus, David Hayter just brought him to life and gave him personality. Yeah, I think he did nail the voice mm -hmm. really well. Um, I like how. But he question. Yeah. Then it's Kiefer Sutherland. Why? The two characters are different. They're different people. But I've played. Who's I believe. Well, because his big boss. And who is not that? Solid Snake, right? But I think in some of the older games he did voice Big Boss as well. But now it's obviously, Keith the, yeah, I think they wanted to change that because he is a different character, right? Because you got Solid and yeah, Liquid. but he's a clone. You got Solid and Liquid, and then Big Boss was like, I think there. I really should remember the story, but it's so complicated. You've got a book. I have. I've got a really good book, which is basically just the story of it. Is that? It's it's, book, it, it's starting to seem to me like that book's more of something to keep your games in the upright position on the bookshelf <laughs> rather than something you've actually read. Yeah, one of them fancy ones to look like you know a lot about games. <laughs> <laughs> um, he moves on to say, Lara Croft has to be in there as well, just iconic through and through. Uh, bonafide national treasure, LucasAid model, toured with you two, and also inspiration for a limited edition Land Rover. How many fictional video game characters can uh, can say that? But most recently, it's been Kiryu Kazama. You see, I've brought this guy to the oh, show. Of course, me. Of course. I'm stealing your lines for a change. It was me. No one pulls off a white suit and nails karaoke quite like him. Plus, he can remove his shirt and jacket in one swift. He can. Have Legendary. you ever noticed that? They grip the top left-hand side of their <laughs> jacket and shirt combo, and one pull rips it clean off their body to expose that tattoo. Hulk Hogan style. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, the next one of my picks is... Let's talk about that. Lara Croft, good pick. Pretty solid. Forgot yeah, that she'd yeah. been the LucasAid model and also been the yeah. inspiration for a limited edition Land Rover. That was from the film, wasn't it? I think I so. Think, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Kiryu Kazuma is always going to get a pop from me, isn't it? Cheap pop from of me. Of course. Yakuza. Pop. He knows how to please the, the main man of the show. If he had managed to squeeze in their PSP UMD, <laughs> I'd have got I'd have slid in Rise Stars DMs. <laughs> no doubt you would. Who's your pick? Who's your next gaming hero? Link, the Legend of Zelda series. Ooh. What can be said about this truly legendary hero uh, that's not been discussed already for years? But one who doesn't speak is such an iconic Nintendo character, making up what we dubbed the holy ninty trinity of Mario, Samus and Link himself. I don't think I could have said that. No? Holy ninty trinity. Oh, I did. Okay. I you normally would have... Yeah, I'd have stumbled. Maybe at the end of the show you might struggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've guided him through some of the most popular games of all time, from early days exploring the dark world in Link's Awakening and the jump to 3D with Ocarina of Time. Link is a true journeyman. Of all the pron protagoni protagonist, protag protagonist, protagonist, <laughs> that mate, time you slipped up, is. chief. You got me worried, didn't you? It's maybe Link who has seen the most changes in appearance, from some humble 2D sprites to the cell shaded and wonderfully animated Tomb Link. His look has always tried to move with the times, keeping him fresh for a new generation. Even when, with his last entry, Breath of the Wild, Link ditched the legendary green tunic and trademark hat, uh, with art di director Satoru Takizawa stating it was getting increasingly hard to make the hat look cool. As for Link's weapon set, he's never been far from the faithful Master Sword, Hylian Shield and Bow, but it's all those others from the various games that make you feel like a true adventurer. Shigeru Miyamoto said many years ago, Link was named as such because there is a link between the player and the game, and we couldn't have wished for a better protagonist to take us on so many battles in the journey. Making use of the uh, books from the other side of your gaming collection that hold it up, the Hyrulean lore? Of course. Nice. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. That's a fact I didn't know the about. The link thing? Yeah. Yeah. Link between the players. I like it. Um, do you know, I, was, I, was, I, I, lost, what do you I lost my call a little bit because yeah, I was laughing at the Yeah, what were you at? Uh, and <laughs> That's classic. That's <laughs> going up there with the Funko Pop. Oh, I think it has to. Um, what, do you, what do you think about the the redesigns he's seen over the years I know when Toon Link, Toon Link came out and Wind Waker was seen it was a bit like oh my god this is uh, well it's a bit like the Priceverse isn't it there's all these different links <laughs> and all these different alternate yeah. universes maybe one day 
um, they'll do a game that joins them all up. Imagine if yeah. I know we had that cool, I think. we had that one on the three DS, didn't we? Where you could go oh, side Warriors, on. Yeah. No, not Hyrule Warriors. The one where you went from like a three D link and then you went on the wall and you oh yeah, ground and then yeah. the link to the past remake. Uh, link between worlds. Yeah, it's a, di- it's a different game but a similar setting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if you could like take Link on a yeah, journey through all the different styles? Mm-hmm. So the eighties two D one. Yeah, yeah. That would be brutal. Uh, <laughs> and then the top down there's one, and obviously into the SNES era, and then yeah. into the N sixty four and beyond. And we actually had sections where you played as each different, maybe completing a small challenge in each one of the worlds. Yeah. To then unlock something to go through as a 3D version of that. Link I think that'd be choice. fantastic, and it would definitely add to the Zelda lore of sort of you are in this endless battle, this between time good and evil. Of, of good and evil. Yeah. I think that'd be a great idea. I do like the Shigeru Miyamoto. My address is the bunker <laughs> number one, the bunker Farmerton. Uh, checks, checks in the post I'm sure he's writing that right now um, I think it was really good they ditched the hat in the new one well, you can, yeah but you stay. can go buy a hat oh yeah you can dress him with just like the, the old link if you want yeah. but the point is like the, the default look which we're big fans of is no hat hmm. I think it was a good design decision definitely Who's uh, who we're hearing from next mate Got another one. This guy reached out to us, slid in the DMs, and said he's loving the show. But we've got a new listener. It's uh, the Gamer Blog. He says, I'll have to go with Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. I'm currently playing the classic Final Fantasy VII game right now and trying to beat it before the remake comes out. Smiling with teeth emoji. He's happy with that. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the family. Welcome. The get the dot gamer dot blog and missed out the dots but you know probably don't need them next up here's a loyal fan of the show he's in the VIP he's in Glorious Bar Steward uh, the Chronicles of a Gamer sorry I took so long to respond but this was a great question and it made me really think this guy he does some good reviews on his page and uh, we implore everyone to go check him out I want to give you my top five and if you want more information I'll gladly DM you guys so I'll keep it brief here one Simon Belmont the w- went up against all the classic age monsters to defeat Dracula in the first two original Castlevanias two, Lara Croft just a great female character with tremendous skill and determination, I like both the original and rebooted version in the rebooted version I enjoyed her growth and character arc three, Nathan Drake if this isn't the coolest character in a franchise then I don't know who is Started out as a male version of Croft to me, but very much became his own character with real life struggles. Four, Geralt, his mundane personality really stood out to me, especially since he's not supposed to care, but has a heart of gold. Five, Kratos, went from badass god killer to whining brat, an annoying character to a bad father, but learned a lot about himself and finally forgave himself. To me, one of the coolest character arcs. He's got a solid point there. Close on the list was Solid Snake, but after the third game, I lost interest with the franchise. Yeah, I think Metal Gear can get very... Solid comment from the Chronicles of Yeah, Game. great comments. I agree with the Metal Gear ones sometimes. I have persevered with it, but it's a strange old mix of story. He does like a, a very complex, outlandish ideas. Oh, uh, Hideo Kojima. Next up's one of my picks. Go for it. Now... We're working on new machines, so pr- I probably typed this with chopsticks about 400 yards away from the keyboard. So if I've made any typos, I'll probably read it out and it may cost I'll a lot of I've it for you, don't worry. Oh, you have. Oh, 104% confident that you've missed a couple of errors. <laughs> Back before Shemu 3 left a bad taste in my mouth like a childhood sweet that had his ingredients changed, Shemu 1 was one of my favourite games of all time and probably still is. The journey through the small Japanese town of Dobuita, your journey coincides with Ryo's journey not only to find his father's murderer, Landy, but also a journey of discovery about himself, and vicariously you are brought along on this journey. Going from lovable newbie and wannabe fresh from your father's dojo, your skills grow along with your ambition. Corey Marshall's fresh voice added believability to the badly translated script that added charm and belief to the character. His wide-eyed enthusiasm only matched by yours as each corner turned 
up something new. As the character grew and his and your confidence grew too, your climactic actions saw you facing a hundred man brawl. This was the icing on the cake, but it's his actions and interactions with the local townspeople that the charm set in and I fell in love with Rio. And he's back with that iconic jacket, possibly the best back in a third person <laughs> adventure. Yeah, pretty stylish that. What's your memories of Ryu? Yeah, he's quite likable, isn't he? Mm. He's, he's doing, he's trying to do what he perceives. He's to a Paragon Plus character, much yeah. like myself, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Trying to be a nice guy. Yeah, but not always. No, I think sometimes he's a bit. It obviously he is a teenager in that one, isn't he? I get the impression he is in his yeah. late teens, early twenties. And he still has a few. It's quite good to show some of those tendencies. Like he does try his best, but he's like he's still out late, and he's. He's wrapped up in solely focusing on finding Landy, and I as was, you would be. I was playing that game at the same age, roughly, as he was in the game. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. and I, I don't know what it is about the Dreamcast. Saw some parallels. Yeah, there was something nice there about it, and I think it was just the sweetness of the. Even though you see your father get murdered in the first five minutes, <laughs> it's a very sweet game. Yeah, it is really. Yeah, it's very gentle. It's very friendly. Full yeah. run to Yakuza. But you know, mm. I wasn't allowed in. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Rio Zuki, I think for 1999 as well, some of the depth of the characters that are in yeah. there, um, he really shone. Mm. And there wasn't much else around at the time that you really had that level of love poured into a character, and then therefore that level of. Um, depth a lot of games to that point they're very cookie cutter like i'm an action guy i'm yeah. big i've got I'm, I'm this and that i'm holding a gun i've got yeah. the muscles this was a lot different to he's that he's not even like anime either is he he's he's, he's very much a. I mean yeah the, the graphics aren't done in a really realistic way but he's quite a real character yeah he very much and yeah he has a time schedule to stick to as he well does, like yeah. which affects many of us in life it does um but yeah I definitely think he deserves to be up there. Okay. Good choice. Um, I'll take uh, the next l listener comment. Uh, C. Pliskin says, Nathan Drake, another mention for him. I was 13 when I got to try and eventually finish Uncharted 3 and then two, uh, t and then two years later I played through the rest of the trilogy, Golden Abyss and 4. For me, A Thief's End was the most emotional I ever felt to a fictional character before seeing Nate's journey as an improviser of bad decisions to someone who wanted to move on from his restless lifestyle made me engage with him and the rest of the main cast to the very end to the point that at 16 I had a phase of wearing small button t-shirts that resembled Nate's different coloured sweaters I think a little of his cocky nature rubbed off on me too uh, it truly felt like I was growing and learning alongside Nate for as flawed and as reckless as he could be may not have picked up the series in a while but probably next to someone like Ryu Nathan is probably my favourite video game protagonist for his likability and stories I see Pliskin's uh, becoming a regular commenter on the show if yeah. he keeps playing his cards right he's going to be in the uh, VIP area add, isn't he? yeah I think so always a very thought out comment from him as well very yeah. high level of comment from yeah, C Pliskin definitely. I think as well he's a he's played 16 years old he, he's not a he's not an older gentleman either he's a young no. young book mm. some of the older studs should start to get a little bit worried about C. Pliskin being on the scene yeah he also mentions Golden Abyss a game that not many people get to enjoy but probably up there it's a great game it's the Vita playing exclusive it, when's it set within it's the set, main as far as I can work out line. before uh, the first Uncharted on PS3 Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's, uh, I I love four. I must admit, like you got me into the trilogy. And one was a bit of a grind, I'll admit. Two was good. Three was really good. Four was just next level. Oh yeah. I think if I'd have played them when they came out back in the day in order, I'd have had the same feeling for the originals. But um, yeah, one's really not aged that well. I mean, it got no. a boost when it four came. Four adds to PS4. so much more to him as a person as well. With his backstory, his brother, and like where he grew up. I, d I tell you what, I don't want to sound controversial here, but the brother out of nowhere had me being a bit, well, what? Yeah, I suppose you, you don't know that much about him, though, so it's I not suppose not, the realms no. of possibility. 
No, you're right. Um, Thank you, C Pliskin. And, and another one of your picks next. Who oh, my God. I'll tell you what, Tom. When you decided that we were going to do top five gamer and protagonists. It's really hard pick, isn't it? I was do five as well. I was struggling without going ten. Without going to the easy well. Yeah. Know. Yeah, we, we, we tried to not be too predictable. I mean, obviously, Link for me is quite predictable, but yeah. I think you've we made got a good to your choice, final pick yet, have we? Oh no, yeah. <laughs> I think so everyone uh, can guess what that. I've be. picked Cole McGrath from Infamous One, Sucker Punch in Sony 2009, appearing for the first time in Infamous, now retrospectively called Infamous One. Cole McGrath's drawing inspiration from such comic heroes as Batman and DMZ. Sucker Punch, known prior to, infam uh, to Infamous for the Sly Cooper series, in Infamous, you are a courier that gets caught up in an explosion that causes our lead character to develop superpowers. The game allowed us to be a superhero or a supervillain. He, for me, is one of those characters that I grew to really like as the game unfolded, learning a little bit more about him as the game went along. Wondering how to react as the gameplay and the plot unfolded was what kept me hooked in. As you play through the game, there's spoilers here, so if you don't want any spoilers for a 4,000-year-old game, <laughs> you better turn and fast-forward 30 seconds now. Uh, the, you discover the big bad to be a guy named Kessler. As the game winds up, you face him in an end boss battle. Now... When I played this the first time, I, it was late at night and I was falling asleep. And I, I, I was pull very. A hair panzer. I pulled a hair panzer and I got very confused. But uh, it's at this point you find out Kessler is you from a future timeline. Oh. Uh, all that happened was all that had happened was to prepare you for the dark future that was in store for you. Uh, I won't give away too much more, but that's a cra pretty crazy plot as you can imagine. But as his abilities grow and unfold, you make decisions either good or bad. So there was Paragon in this. Uh, watching the character grow and change is what bonded me to the character. His believable reaction to gaining superpowers and the story around him was believable and well acted and voiced by Jason Cottle. His dark, brooding voice added weight and believability to the character, further pulling you into this still great action adventure title. I implore anyone who has the ability to play Infamous 1 to play yeah. it. It's, it's a good game. As in a gamey game, you know, it's yeah. got good... Con the controls are absolutely sublime. Really are. I Even for a PS3 game, you're like, wow, well, it plays ask, well. Does this, like, whet your appetite for what they're going to bring with Ghost of Tsushima? Knowing <laughs> what they were capable of back then. Ooh, and how long they've had to make It's a totally different game, though, isn't it? But yeah, yeah the, the but the quality, the story as well. Like from memory, it's been a while since I played, but it unfolds in like a, a cartoon style as well, mm -hmm. like a cartoon strip yeah. style in Infamous One, and um, it's just so well done. It really because I've I pl I had it originally. I just picked up a copy for fifty p, but I went back and bought like a an even better version of it for fifty p. Yeah, it had a comic book in it and some other bits and bobs. Oh, I'm nice. glad I did because. Yeah. They put a lot of effort into this. A lot of effort. Uh, have you played the Sly Cooper games? Because he's a great protagonist as well. No. They're I think really. They're PS2, that one. Yeah, that, PS2, yeah. and they got remastered for PS3. Mm. It's the fashion these days, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, but yeah, Sucker Punch are good, mate. They are good. Sly Cooper 1, 2, and 3 are great games. Infamous 1 and 2 are great games as well. This Cole McGrath guy, he's a. Uh, He's our, he's our calibre. So based on that, Ghost of Tsushima should be an absolute belter. Good stuff. Mm. The hype train rolls on. Uh, next up, we've got the Well, muscle. wait. Why don't we muscle. let him take us to the bridge and you do your p last pick? Oh, okay. Makes sense, doesn't it? It does make sense, yeah. That's now, Daddy Zilla's he's in, he's in the hardcore elite. There are lots of the hardcore elite commenting this week, but some new listeners as well. Yeah, good mix. Yes, and he's worked his absolute socks off to make sure he got in the feature this he week because he he's missed time. out, hasn't he, for a few weeks? Yeah, he has. Um, an honourable mention for me, Go before on. we do my last one, would be uh, Cal Kestis from Jedi Fallen Order. Wow. I thought he was a really well-written character. Just Yeah. That's I know we get a lot of young Jedi Padawan going, like, sort of, the journey of growing up there's two games on my list to pick up when Ponsabris check finally comes home yeah finally finally for the for the floor sweepings that I get after okay. you've had the main chunk of that Ancestors of Humankind or, or Odyssey okay because I, I promised that came out I yeah. promised didn't I and I'm yep. a man of my word I think the listeners know that by now mm -hmm. keep my word and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 
I think that's a good choice. Both of those. Mm-hmm. Although I'm not sure if Ancestors got you a physical release. You could blitz release. through Jedi Fallen Order in a couple of weekends, I reckon, if you had enough time. Certainly. Okay. Um, my last pick, uh, probably easy guess by many, but it's Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption Most 2. Most were probably thinking it was going to be some character from Overwatch, so you've dodged the well, bullet actually, there. Well, actually, yeah, I did toy with that, but... Oh, God. They need a bit more work on the law. They should come to me. Oh. Anyway, Arthur Morgan. You want to simmer down with the law, or else <laughs> we'll be our four-hour show. We're going to be going with major spoilers here. If you've not finished Red Dead 2, just turn off for a minute or so. When you turn on Red Dead Redemption 2 for the first time, you look at this new character in your control and your thoughts immediately turn to John Marston and the amazing journey and tragic ending you took him on. Uh, and you kind of wish you you want to play as him again. That's until roughly 60 hours later, you realise Arthur Morgan may be one of the greatest gaming protagonists of all time. Um, excellently voiced by the really talented Roger Clark and with more layers than a wedding cake, Arthur's first appears appearance is, is cold and brutal and quite a violent man a proper enforcer in the Vandalin gang to be feared but respected as we play deeper into the game we realise there's so much more to him as a person um, his his beliefs and the choices he does make him very like questionable mm. but as the game moves on they do tend to Obviously, the player's actions can change that a lot. Um, and if you try and play it as we kind of, we say we want to, how we would want to, how we want Arthur to go, he just become a, a very, very deep, likeable character. Definitely. Um, but as we get around halfway through the game, Rockstar go and give us the old. Rick Flair, low blow, megaton bomb. Arthur's diagnosed with tuberculosis. Any of us who know a little history knew at that time and that moment in life that would be it for him, that his life would end in this game. As we watch him become weaker and more frail, the player just wishes for him to get better. The player's choices do affect a little of how Arthur's last days play out. But his redemption mainly comes in the form of a younger John Marston and his family. And now he sees it as his job to help them start a new life and escape from the one they have, even if it costs him his life in doing so. Arthur Morgan is really the epitome of a true outlaw, fighting for freedom against a rapidly changing country, obsessed with greed and ever-progressing technology. To me, this character made me look at that time in history as well and question if it, the Industrial Revolution and modernization of America also killed the American spirit. Tom, I think whenever you shuffle off this mortal coil, I shall pay Steve the Stonemason <laughs> <laughs> to chisel that onto your gravestone. That's beautiful. Good. He was a beautiful man. He was. He will be missed. That's honestly how I think of him. It's like, wow, he's the closest I've got with a game character thing. I wish he was, wish he was real. I, there were times when the the sun shone through his ears, and you could see the veins in his ears, and he kind of looked yeah. at the camera, and you looked at him, and he kind of looked, you know, you had the camera round forward, and he looked through to you. Good, good one to end on. A little bit predictable, maybe, but I'll give you, I'll give you a moment here. I think. He looked at you and he had that glint in his eye and there were times where I was like, I feel like I know this dude. Yeah, absolutely. And the way he's looking out of the screen at me now, I feel like he's real. Yeah. And like I said to you in the early weeks of the show, I started playing through Red Dead 2 with my dad. Yeah. And I feel a bit bad that that got derailed really because I think he really fell in love with the character of Arthur well he went to spoil the city didn't he he went to spoil the city and I was like well there's not much point you know very much uh, a man of our family or your side of the family or whatever you're going to do it (laughs) because you can't keep your nose out of spoilers either he went and spoiled it for himself but I think he fell in love with the character of Arthur as well and I don't blame him 
because last time he looked in on me on a video game it was all a little bit dreamcast and he yeah. looks in there and there's this guy staring back at him and my dad loves a western yeah and we won't watch sci-fi or any of that he wants real stuff so he likes western so for this to be going on and this character to evolve in front of him much like you know he's only recently got Netflix so him and uh, Mumsy yeah a bit of a 4-4 break there but we'll go with it yeah uh I started binging these box sets but up until then he'd never really binge watched any sort of entertainment yeah so when he he poured himself into red dead he got he got so much out of it the story yeah, i know it's sometimes nice. in the game itself it can be a little bit fetch quest like go here do that and mm. we need to set this up for this to happen and you think oh this is how it's going to play out then none of that ever happens and you move on to a different mm. story much like life i suppose yeah uh, but yeah, Arthur Morgan. He, I think that po the the point that stick that made me think of those comments at the end was where I'll always remember the scene where you ride. I think come across Saint Denis for the first time. Mm. You can go there before, but in a cutscene, and Dutch and Arthur just kind of look at this black, smoggy, mucky, dirty city. Yeah, and they're like, "That's what's coming," and we're we're no longer wanted you feel for them because their way of life does seem it's probably glamorized a lot in the game but it, yeah it just seems so much better well i think that uh, and simpler you needed men like that tough men like that to conquer a new country frontier. a new yeah. frontier yeah yeah but Absolutely. once it was all Done. conquered and the roads yeah. were paved and everyone had gas lights and coal fires yeah, people like that weren't welcome, and I think that was yeah, quite eloquently absolutely. that point betrayed really was well. betrayed and eloquently put in that show. Absolutely. On that rather emotional note, mm. I've <laughs> I was going to bring in a new catch, but I'm not going to do that. You're now. rattling them out too many this week. Yeah. Okay. Well, Daddy Zilla eighty says great. He's going to send us to the bridge, as we say, yeah. Tom, the muscle of the show in the Inglorious Bar Stewards. Uh, him and his family all gather around the. Uh, internet on a weekly basis to listen to the activities of the show so welcome to all the zillas mommy cara get well soon i think you're well on the men now and uh devin zilly you've been a very good brother uh been a very brave boy supporting the family daddy zilla sending us to the bridge he says great topic guys i really don't know how you do it it's a tough decision but here here we go Earthworm Jim, he's one for the left field. This is great. Earthworm Jim has to be one of the greatest video game protagonists of all time. Come on, a normal Earthworm gets a robotic super suit that makes him human. <laughs> he battles e uh, human like. He battles evil to save the world, and his love interest, Princess What's Her Name, with his chum, <laughs> Peter Puppy, way back in 1994 is when it all started. I'll watch out for the flying crows. Jim went on to star in uh, Cows. My bad. Daddy Zilla, don't break me like a twig and floss <laughs> with me. Uh, Jim went on to star in four games, five if you count the special edition, Earthworm Jim, Earthworm Jim 2, Earthworm Jim 3D, and Earthworm Jim Menace to the Galaxy. He's appeared on the Sega Genesis, Strip Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, Sega CD, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Sega Master System, Game Gear, Sega Saturn, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and the Game Boy Color. If you've never played an Earthworm Jim game, shame on you. What's not fun about using your head, swing around, flying a rocket, beating up on bad guys, just don't make Peter Puppy angry. Much like Daddy Zilla, you won't like him when he's angry. <laughs> I had libbed that last lap bit. Uh, Very good comment. A great comment. Thank you to all the listeners, new and old, for chiming in. Um, it's now time where we limp to the section of the show we call listener stingray i've left on my uh, phone all the way through so no doubt it's going to be full of interference tom <laughs> hokey cokey as always from me now if my agent will be on the phone again <coughs> well, i can't afford for him to come on and nudge my wages down any further or else i'll be uh, i'll be working for water well how do the listeners get in contact tom and how do they follow what we're about to talk them through you go onto instagram you type in the search engine hashtag stingrays boot but you must click on recent because they're going to be the most recent pickups and then uh, take a browse through with us wait hold the line caller 
Yeah. <clears throat> Listener Stingray. When the big man makes a house call, you'd better be ready. These guys got in touch to show us their pickups from Stingray's Boot. You can too. Just hashtag Stingray's Boot on Instagram or Twitter or email us. Questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Some of the younger listeners have to email us their pickups, Tom, because they haven't got social media. Good. It's a good thing. We're a PG podcast. There's no swears. A little bit edgy at times. Mm. Only Simpsons like Mumsy and Dadsies. So you can listen to us in the car as you journey to and from the school pickup. Who's first in the boot? Uh, Comic Pictures 79, showing us some of his fancy artwork. Um, that Godzilla with the I Japanese style Ooh, waves. That's very good. I guess I'll have to cross his palm with silver to uh, get a little bit of that action, but yeah. I can see that on a print on my wall in my study. Yeah, that'd be great. In the bunker. Have you seen uh, King of Monsters yet? The, new, the latest Godzilla film? No. Really good. Ooh, that was a PS2 game as well. More than likely. Probably and Sloan Midna. It. What's he got here? Xenoblade Chronicles X. Oh, on the I've given Wii the U. Switch a bit of a test recently and having played, of, uh, having a play of unfinished games on the Wii U. I have the standard edition of Xenoblade Chronicles a few years. Decided to pick up the limited edition with an Amazon gift card for my work for my birthday. That's cool, doesn't it? Yeah. I I never I could never get into the Xenoblade series. Um. They look great, but I just never could gel with it. Um, next up, Sega Junkie. He's got himself Garfield caught in the axe on the Mega Drive. I love Gar. I think Daddy Zilla's recently picked this up. I love Garfield. He's a he's a much unloved character from the eighties and nineties. He's voiced by Fraser. Or am I imagining that? Wasn't Car- uh, the guy who did um, Fraser? Kelsey. I thought he was voiced by yeah, Peter Murray. Peter Murray. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the guy? You mean the guy who played I mean, Bankman in I the mean Ghost Bill of Rory, Car- Bill Murray. Cartoon. Yeah. Obviously, I got a little bit carried away. Yeah. I thought he voiced him in that cartoon, and I thought that I was because he made a mi- he, ma- he did a sound over for it, and he made a mistake because I can't remember who the director was, but it sounded similar to another director that was well renowned, and he said, "Oh, if it's him, I want to work with him." Is it really he- Scott? Wrigley. Wrigley Scott, probably. Wrigley. And he rocked up to do the voiceover for this CGI cartoon. He's like, what? Just go check it out. A little factoid for you. Game Racer. <laughs> he's uh, gone against convention. It's not a racing game this week. He's picked up Fighting Vipers for the sake yeah. of Saturn. He's done a pickups video if you want to go dive deep on what he's been grabbing on his YouTube channel. Barbaro Games. The longest, some. most loyalist, most serviest fan of the show. Uh, picked up uh, some PlayStation 2 games. Got Haven, Call of the Ring. I keep meaning to get that, you know. It had different Hot. box art in the UK. Have you ever had that game? No, I don't think I've owned any of those. I don't want to be controversial, but I think you had that. <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> um, we can't, uh, Retro Collector Ray got oh, some great titles here, look. Yeah, but guess where he got them from? Gotham Games? Yeah. Good lad. Yeah, inspired by the show, inspires art, right art, inspires life, inspires art. He's picked up... Super quick turnaround, delivered and ready for playing. I love independent gaming stores. Um, What's not to love? Well, yeah, they picked up Star Wars Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron 3 and The Excellent with Ricky Hatton on the front, Fight Night Round 2. Yeah, but zoom in in the top right-hand corner of that Fight Night on GameCube. See what it comes with. You get Super Punch-Out. You get super punch out. That's, really That's part actually, of the deal. Yeah, I did have. I had that as well. I had that fight night on Cube. Um, Harvey Retro's in town. Uh, yeah, he's got the Robocop. He's got a VHS of Robocop. He's got a he DVD has. of Robocop. And he's been and got the Arrow DVD. Now, I want that. HMV, to justify themselves, are doing these, selling these special editions now. It's probably just box art, but. It looks yeah. super cool. Mm-hmm. I think it comes with some other packing bits and bobs as well. So Robocop scared the living bejesus out of me as a kid. And I got so terrified of it, I couldn't sleep for a week. And then to conquer my fears as a teenager, I decided I was going to watch the wheels off it. And now <laughs> I know every line of dialogue almost. So scary as that is. Daddy Zilla 80 up next, the big man. He's got himself Star Fox Zero. Oh, tell me uh, about that. Because I never had that. I'd already kicked the Wii U to the curb by the time that... Uh, yeah, chunk came out. It, oh, it's would, a brilliant Star Fox game, but it's given these horrible controls. 
that I remember Miyamoto demonstrating and he was like, he had the tablet and you could like, it, it was just weird. You could aim, aim with the tablet, but the plane was flying on the TV screen, like the ship. Oh. And it just didn't make you feel like, I just, I just used to bin off the tablet bit because I think you could, or you could just look at the plane on the screen and just ignore the shooting on. It's an R wing, isn't it? Is it R wing or A wing? One of those. Yeah, a, a good game, but terrible controls. What does that come with though? Zoom in, Star Fox Guard. Yeah, it was like um, a bit like a tower defense thing, from what I remember. I didn't okay. really go near it. Uh, you wanted nothing to do no, with it. No, it's a shame. You do get used to the controls, and they do work, but it's just again in just implementing something like gimmicky. Mm, it has been a bit like that sometimes. Shouldn't slate the legend, but not everyone can be perfect all the no, time. No, exactly. OG Gamer's way, got a burgeoning collection there. He's got some awesome games on his uh, shelf, but he's yeah. picked up Battleborn on the PS4 from the creators of Borderlands. Yeah, wasn't this some sort of uh, Battleborn? Was didn't this start off as uh, what's that game that we've always quite liked? Um, the World War Two one, Brothers in Arms. Oh, was it? It was going to be an online version of that, I thought, and then everyone sort of kicked off and they changed its name to Battleborn. Ah, is that what they did? Ah, something like that. Something okay. in my mind says there. On the theme of uh, Dreams this week, Tom, OG Gamer's also got his Little Big Planet 1 and 2, and we talked about Little Big Karting, Little Big Planet Karting last week yeah. as well, so he's he's been inspired. Uh, Welsh Game Hunter, Evac, Lifeboat Evacuation. Um, That's the Alien Isolation Steelbook. Oh, is it? Yes. Ah, and thank you, Welsh Game Hunter, looking. because currently now I need that. I need yeah. that. One th quick thing, you, you right, I know it was a double readout, but OG Gamer 550's got the awesome Rise and or War of and Fall of Cybertron games on PS3. Have you played those? No, you always ask me. Oh, I thought you had played them, no. sorry. They are no. great games. Uh, Play Stavey, up next. He's got uh, Charity Shop Pickups, Monopoly, uh, Star Wars Monopoly, Top Trumps with Lord of the Rings, and a selection of PS2 games. He only paid £3 for that Star Wars. Uh, Bo Below up next. He's rocking one of our T-shirts, The Man Who Finishes Games, available to everyone. Just uh, where, see where would you get that if you wanted some unofficial controller merch? You out? best tell me, because you're the merch man. Okay, where am I? <laughs> well, you can... I think one of the quickest ways would be to hit up Comic Picture 79 on Instagram, or go flap yourself over to Etsy, comic pictures, no space, scroll through the unofficial controller merch, the man who finishes games, t-shirt is there. You can also get any of the artwork that Adam the Artist has done of the village, the lore that we build, and he can't keep up. Adam the Artist, he's got people going through his uh, studio like a dose of salt, <laughs> doing a quick doodle, kicking them in the backside, doing the next one. Um, uh, super Retro Gaming next. He's got Super Smash TV on the SNES. Uh, boxed edition with manual as well. Good game that is. Yeah, nice. yeah. Uh, press Start Gaming. We've had some new booters this week as well. <laughs> who we implore to come into got the uh, main part of the show. Morrowind, one of your favourites. Best ever Elder Scrolls game. It's all <laughs> downhill from there. <laughs> Uh, he's got that Simpsons game. He's got, got the, the double Boy, box Tomb Raider. He's got the double big box uh, Tomb Raider, uh, PAL Tomb Raider on PS1. He's got Road Avenger, the mega CD game. Yes. He he's here. Sharaban. Sharaban? Sharaban. Uh, he's got some, some uh, NES controllers. Yeah, there's all sorts of different yeah, tap well, there. Famicom and NES. He's French. He yeah. doesn't know what we're talking Oscar about. Oscar got himself he some does. pumpo fongs. Hang on a minute. Thank you, Sharaban, for your loyal booter. Yeah, Oscat's got himself some Pompo Funks. Oscat's in the, must be in the VIP. I think he, he is, is in the he VIP is, area. Think, yeah, yeah. Oscat, welcome to the team. Got Xena. He's got a lot of that are Violet from The Incredibles. He's got some good stuff in there. Yeah. What's that bottom one? Thor Ragnarok, Heimdall. He's got a Mass Effect Pompo Funk. That's stuck, in it? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Retro bits. Mass Effect Andromeda. Retro bits next. Uh, that's a nice photo. I like the way it's arranged. That looks pretty slick. Alicia Dragoon. From memory, yeah. that was a shooting game. Uh, yeah. Like a. Is anything to do with Panzer Dragoon? No. 
think I think you were like a you were on a dragon maybe it is a confessed I don't know I think I've had it at some point in time yeah. basically sh- I think if memory serves it's like a sh- shoot em up a yeah. shmup okay. Trident Edge Bonjour Raid, Raiden Project on um, Playstation not sure what that is Danny Plays that's another shmup Danny Plays Danny Plays is uh, in the VIP area Got Windows 98 that's a good pick up yeah and a DS Mm-hmm. You're not going to guess how much money she paid for all that tat, though. Nine pound everything. Danny plays. Mm-hmm. Makes everyone else in the boot. That time shift games look interesting. Fear's pretty good as well. I've never played Fear. Yeah. And I don't good. remember playing time shift. I've not played Probably that, one of those pause time mechanic games, I'd guess. Yeah, could be. That's that, um, though, look, nine pound for a DS. Yeah. And all that other stuff chucked in as well. Radbash Gaming. Got a very cool Raphael mug, um, Joker artwork, Wonderful Life, Tombstone, one of my favourites of VHS, VHS is yeah. as well. That uh, Raphael He's got mug. Band of Brothers Steel Box, which I got when I was a young, well, when I was probably a teenager. I've still got Love one. That. Yeah, got the Pacific one as well. I picked up the Blu ray Band of Brothers, same, similar box. Yeah. Four quid, try it shop. Why don't you put it in the boot? This was before the boot. Hmm. I'm afraid. <laughs> Retro BB collector Ray. Before boot. Who we do? Oh, beam. There's someone who loves the boot. He's even come up with a time before the boot. Uh, ret- him, Retro him. collector I Ray. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Read Ray out again. He's got a. He's got the uh, turtles Konami. Uh, is it Tiger? Yeah, that's the turn of the wheel. But look at it though. Is that you had that? They're bringing those back out, according to Daddy Zilla again. Aren't That's they? true. Yeah. You had that, that little handheld, mm. that LCD Turtles game. I'd love one of those yes, just for the artwork that. on the front of it alone. Where's yeah, that, that now? Artwork is cool. Where's that now? The first, I, I remember the first time I ever came across Turtles was my dad would have the newspaper, and I started noticing the little comic strips in the back. How can you say that's a full turn of the wheel? Some absolute belters left in there. Is, that is the turn of the wheel. He's just doing double no readouts. double readouts. Not happening. Sorry, listeners. Sorry. They can scroll on. They can scroll on. He's not a nice man, is he? I'm not. He's the heel of the show. He's I the am. bad guy. Triple H. That's the all the dips. Jack. It's all the dips in the boot for our listeners. Don't forget to hashtag Stingray's boot or email us for your pickups to be read out. Top gaming protagonists. So therefore, what has Stingray been doing this week, Tom? Ooh. Tell you what he's been doing. Sit down. Let me get in the driving okay. seat for a moment. Knowing that you may have been making shoddy Oscars no come on slow down think about it slow down chew your food this is the very last of the script okay right he's been getting some Funko pomps of all the top <laughs> five game protagonists <laughs> he's got a boot full of Arthur more gains more gains <laughs> yes <laughs> more gains <laughs> it's like weight lifted version roided at version of yeah Arthur that's Morgan. what it is uh you ever notice all 90s action figures? I was having this conversation with my brother. They're all like roided up to the max. Gotta be. Even the like Star Wars re Yeah, yeah my brother's got a lot of those from the 90s of the Star Wars. Like Luke is just like this absolute like Arnie. You ain't seen Lando. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't seen Lando. I always get Lando mixed up with the guy, uh, Carl Weathers, who plays... Um, what's his name? I think it's Dylan in... Or something in Predator. You know, based the one on who does the arm shake. Based on the action figure, it's not that, difficult. Yeah, it's not. And then it? you see Billy D. Williams in real life. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> For the audio podcast, that was me being very small and slim. Um, it's time. He's making. I don't know that he spring stop. Does that happen before or after the preamble? It's been a while, hasn't it? We weren't in the yeah. we weren't in the bunker last week. No. It's time 
for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot, what's nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battle for Endor this week. These are the new release highlights for the week February 17th to February 23rd, 2020. Listeners, these are out on digital, physical, or will be by the time this podcast is in your feed, but could be region dependent. He's torn up the drive, he's tearing up the drive, he's come to a stop. Boot pop, shake, wattle, and wow. <laughs> you love that, that's why I say it. He stood out the back. He's got a Lambert hanging. I don't like the look of these Arthur Moore games. These Funko Pomps aren't looking as legit as I hoped they would Fire be. Fire damaged as well. Fire damaged, a lot of it. Rain damaged <laughs> and sun damaged. They're just plain white boxes <laughs> and he's scribbled on with Sharpie. <laughs> or he doesn't use Sharpies, he used Farpies. He's written on there, Arthur Moore game. RDR2. First game out of the boot. Corruption 2029. Uh, on the PC, February 17th. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're doing a market stall at Farmerton Market. Now that's been repaved after the aeroplane crash. We didn't want to do it, but we've gone so law heavy, I feel like I'm um, balls deep in Emmerdale. Oh, yeah. Setting a dystopian America in a non so distant future, Corruption 2029 is a new tactical strategy game from the Bearded Ladies, creators of Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. They've cranked the games out, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. I remember reading that in their Almost boot. as good as... Have we been going this long that I know yeah. that sequels have come out in the boot? Scary. If it's a THQ game, it surely must be. Uh, next, we've got Makoko on the PC, February 17th. Nostalgic arcade gameplay remastered. Capture areas and save the girls from various troublemakers. Comes along with 24 unique bosses and their absurd stories. Slow. Ins- inspired from games like Volfide, Quicks, and Gal's Panic. Slow down, slow down. If you rush this, your egg won't be done perfectly, will it? It won't be done perfectly. Next up, Drone Champions League. The, have you picked a mummy, mummy? Uh, I've picked a mummy, mummy. Yes. Okay. I have. Okay. Well, if I take the next two, that would include my mummy mummy. Okay. Drone Champions League The Game, PC, PS4, and Xbox One, February 18th. Drone Champions League The Game. Um, this is the one where I, I earn my sponsorship on. So just so you know, it's Drone Drone Championships League. Uh, it's a game that's coming out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, February, February 18th. Drone Championships League The Game is the official video game of Drone Champions League. Their leading skirt series for professional drone flying teams. Contenders in the highest mode can prove their flying skills to qualify for the Drone Champions League selection, draft, and compete in the real life racing series. That's a bit clever, isn't it? So, if you get Drone Champions League and you're good enough, you might even get to compete in the real life racing series. Really? Of Drone Champions League. I think you've said that enough times now. What we've got next? Dude. Someone needs to pay for all that gel you need. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix on Xbox One, February 18th. Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, Xbox One, Chapter 18th. They've waited long enough. Xbox One owners can experience the breadth of the Kingdom Hearts series with the release of Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix and Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue for the platform today. Well, a few days ago. The two collections which are available digitally pack in nine HD remastered adventures for Xbox One. Do you need to have played all of those like remixes and the 2.5s and stuff to get the general gist? Or can you play 1, 2, 3? Oh, I think you can just play the 1, 2 and 3. Yeah. Yeah, although, you know, if you want to play them on anything more modern than a PS2, you can have to be playing 1.5. Once again, sorry. The man. show's gone a little bit too long and you're playing footsie with me. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the first um, time this has happened. It's not. 3000th Duel on the Switch is next, February 19th. A hero with no memory with this mysterious mask covering his face is thrown out into his land of unknown, reaching to an end of his journey. He discovers a truth that is hard to swallow, something terrifying about his true identity. His dad's Pete the Plumber. <laughs> Explore a huge world with organically connected bio biomass uh, biomes biomes that's a little bit like uh, your favourite genre of game it is of more than 300 terrifying monsters multi-platform action awaits you 
I'll take the next one because that's my pick. That's your mummy, mummy, is it? Yeah. Have you have you pre-selected a VHS to take home from the big man himself? Oh, um, I haven't. I'll have to have a think. I'll take one. Okay. At the end. Do you want me to do my VHS pick? Soon as yeah. I've done my mummy, mummy, which was Kingdom yeah. Hearts. Before I launch into my VHS pick, should we just let the new listeners know that the mummy, mummy is our game that we're taking home out of the boot? It's the one that you pulled on the Ain't and Strings for. I said, mummy, mummy, I need this game. Yeah. But we also take a VHS because that's what Stingray used to do in our village growing up. It is. Mine is Treasure Island in Space. I was talking to Harvey Retro about it earlier. Seeing as the boot's here, I'll take it. It's a, an Italian-made show that got sort of dubbed over in English. Got it from... Uh, didn't get it from Stingray. Got it from Village Video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's a local video shop that's no longer... I think now it's a nail salon. <laughs> Just for all the keen wanters to want into nose yeah and it's uh ernest borgia you know the co-pilot in airwolf not very well but he's him on. he's uh he's the lead character mm. i'm having that what are you having devil may cry 3 special edition uh that's out on the switch on february 20th set before the events of the original devil may cry this action classic sees dante facing off against his twin brother virgil where designs on unlocking a gate to the demonic realm, to which Dante himself holds the key, featuring selectable combat styles such as Swordmaster and Gunslinger, Devil May Cry 3 brings an extra level of strategy to the series' renowned stylish gameplay. This edition includes all the special edition content, including the ability to play as Virgil, and even includes extra bonus features exclusive to the Switch, which also is a uh, the Bloody Palace mode, Oh yeah, which is like basically like floor after floor of baddies you can now do co-op as Dante and Virgil that's quite pretty, cool yeah isn't I think it? that's good it's uh, quite hard so it's good okay well it. I'll uh, I'll razzle through the next two Puyo yep. Puyo 2 for the Switch now these are both from the Sega Ages pack yeah uh, which we've seen numerous releases of in the boot haven't we over the keep years keep churning them out Sega keep uh, February 12th go to the well because you ain't got nothing left <laughs> apart from Yakuza February 20th, the sequel to the original Puyo Puyo returns in Sega Ages for Nintendo Switch. Stack and chain your Puyo combos to negate the garbage Puyo sent by your opponent. Swap between single Puyo Puyo, double Puyo Puyo, and endless Puyo Puyo game modes <laughs> for more Puyo fun. I think they're also sponsoring me to get you some more gel. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Switch, February 20th. That's also out on the same day. It's also part of the Sega Ages pack. Hailed as one of the most successful Genesis games. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Shame on you if you don't know what the game is. Hailed as the most successful Sonic game. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 garnered critical acclaim. It's about to sell even more gangbuster numbers on the Switch. Critical acclaim after its 1992 release follows Sonic and Tails in his debut as they team up against Dr. Eggman in order to save the Chaos Emeralds, the Char's Emeralds, from the clutches of evil. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 introduced a competitive two-player mode that will be available once more, along with newly added features such as drop dash, rankings, time trial and knuckles. Seeing as we're going in Stingray's boot and he was a man who could get anything back in the day, mm. I'm going for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie on VHS. The new one. That's the sort of thing you'd be peddling. It is. Isn't definitely. it? Dodgy cam copy. Yep. Mumsy, mumsy, mumsy. I want it. She's like, are you sure I could take you down Kinema in the woods for this? And you're like, nah, I want it nah. You know me so well. Chinese subtitles come up halfway through I it had a, a video copy of Phantom of the Menace as well Phantom of the Phantom Menace Phantom of the Menace it was that dodgy <laughs> Sting Ray did the intro credits for it as well no it was legit I got it legit from uh, you think he got like um, Wayne Ray on his hands and <laughs> knees and he put like a blackboard with the words on and he just crawled forward while Ray recorded it more than likely that's how Lucas did it under the night, under the night in birth, XE. I see why you skipped this one. Late, CLR, open bracket, close bracket. It's available on the PS4 Switch, February twentieth. Rule the night, control a deeper, darker, fine experience than ever before. Battle with twenty-one unique characters, including all the Lon Draker from his original moves, story, stage, and music. Master devastating new combos, dazzling special attacks, and online arcade story and training modes. Command combatants, I nearly struggled there. Command combatants with different brawling techniques showcasing over 12,000 stunning frames of animation. Perfect your style with nearly a thousand character balance adjustments. Up next, Seal Fledge, PC Switch, February 21st. In the future, there is still hope for humanity. Take a young girl under your wing. 
raise her to your adulthood in seal fledge a daughter raising simulator an enchanting new simulator featuring compelling management gameplay and a lovable cast of characters those quite, quite a few this week yes crikey the boots full again those that have used their pro plus stuck with us through the boredom levels they've climbed mount Sulalea <laughs> in on planet vulcan it's one for the finster gamer and the Lord Jimmy Green. They've climbed Mount Silalea. They're here, atop the precipice. They've had the patience. Tom, what are you hoping to play? I think I'm going to try and add some more uh, of people's creations on Dreams. Hmm. Uh, the usual medley of Call of Duty, Apex, and Overwatch. Hmm. Um, I can't think of anything else. Maybe do a few more Colossi. Shadow of Colossus. What did you call them last time? No, I, I'd writ. I, I, I said it as. I'd writ Colossi. Colossi. <laughs> no, I, I just writ Colossi. <laughs> Shadow of Colossi. That was a plural. I'll Colossi. take it. If you hadn't yeah. raised it, I'd have took it. Uh, Is that the plural for Colossi? 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 Colossi is the pl Colossi. plural of um, Colossus. What am I going to do? Mm, threatened I was going to dig deep and have a go on that uh, Devil May Cry on PS2 dust it off slap it in throw it around or have I got an HD remaster you could play 5 without even worrying about anything I don't have 5 ok you're spending money ain't got again ain't you mm. <laughs> <laughs> dig that out I'm going to finish Resistance Fallen Man I've got a bit of time this weekend so I'll just get it blitzed I'm just going to pistol whip through you it. You like finish games nowadays. John Wayne. Boom. Do you yeah. know what? I finish games, but I don't own the t-shirt. That makes me a bad man, doesn't it? It does. So as We're soon both as bad men, really. We should get one ordered each. As soon as possible, you're not allowed one. Am I not? No. I have finished some games recently. Oh, I have finished I the I game. I have finished a few <laughs> games back in the day, boy. <laughs> oh, I like that. That was good. Boy, <laughs> boy. Uh, anything else? Seen your name on our ledger. Seen your name on our ledger. <laughs> That's just all I take from that first trailer. I was like, "What is this guy? What is he like a bounty hunter?" Oh, we're back in RDR, yeah. are we? We better not. It's a rabbit hole. We'll never come out of. Anything uh, else you're looking to play? No, mate. I think that's about no it. No one's done Arthur Morgan on Dreams yet, though. Yes, they have. <laughs> he was one of the first <laughs> characters that came up. I was like, "There he is." <laughs> Did he look any good? Mm, uh, oh, you tell me Dreams is Mediocre. Great. Oh, dear. That's a shame, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't that a shame? A little bit mediocre, yeah. So the sun doesn't shine through his ear holes and shows the veins, no, does it? the sun looks like it shines through his head. <laughs> looks like Superman's just raiding from the back with his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, out of uh, all the hype you were giving me for that game, you didn't send me Arthur Morgan, did you? <laughs> no, you sent I me thought Wicked. the Ewok... Yeah, but those sound effects they'd made for the yum, three yum. what <laughs> yum yum <laughs> You know what we uh and dookin dookin We're rambling. We Is are. that it? That's it. What are you hoping to play? Yeah, I've asked you. Oh uh, you've asked me, I've so answered. Resistance. Time to ring man. the bell. Tap out. I don't know how we've done it, but we've put together another slogathon. It was like the Royal Rumble on a pay per view, Tom. Going down like Deontay Wilder in the first this weekend okay it's time for the end of the show boxing references are lost on me unless it's in fight night round three <laughs> that's all we have time for this week listeners as always thank you for your time and we look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week until then happy gaming and remember there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller it's what you do with it that counts see you Tom see you mate